So, hi everyone! We are now moving on to the accounting cycle, which is the series of sequential steps na ginagawa natin in order to achieve or to accomplish the accounting process. Number one is the identification of transactions or events to be recorded. Ito yung mga nakukuha natin sa mga receipts, sa mga invoice, or dun sa mga uh, evidences or documents na pinaprovide ng entity. Next is transactions are recorded in the journal. Ito yung gagawin natin ngayon, yung pagsulat or journalizing of entries. Number three, or step three is journal entries are posted to the ledger. Step four is the preparation of trial balance. Step five is the preparation of the worksheet including adjusting entries. Step six is the preparation of financial statements. Step seven is adjusting journal entries or journalized and posted. Step eight is closing journal entries are journalized and posted. Step 9 is the preparation of a post-closing trial balance. And lastly, the reversing journal entries are journalized and posted. Our step 10 is optional. Hindi siya required dun sa accounting process. But, uh, makakatulong pa rin siya since part siya ng accounting process. This cycle is repeated. Uh, bawat accounting period. Ibig sabihin, ito talaga yung process na sinusunod. Yung 10 steps. Now, the first 3 steps in accounting, yung identification ng events to be recorded, yung pagsulat natin sa journal, tsaka yung pag-post natin sa ledger, ina-accomplish yung tatlo na yun during the period. While the 4th hanggang sa 9th step, ginagawa siya at the end of the uh, of the period, tapos yung last step, optional lang siya, and occurs at the beginning of the next period. Ginagawa yung 10th step sa next period na ibig sabihin. For example, ang um, period natin ngayon is 2020 for one year, tapos ang um, closing entries natin is, gagawin natin siya, dun na natin sa next period. Okay, start na tayo sa journal. Um, nakapagpakita na ako sa inyo ng example ng journal dun sa last video natin. So, if hindi nyo pa napanood, you can watch it. Tapos, uh, we have the general journal. Ang general journal ay tinatawag din na book of original entries. So, dun natin ginagawa ang debits and credits. Now, the journal is a chronological record daw. Sunod-sunod siya ng transactions. Ibig sabihin kung ano yung unang nangyari, iyon yung ire-record mo una. For example, ang date ngayon is June. So, ang month natin is June. So, June 1, hindi pwedeng mauna si June 2 kay June 1. That's it. Tapos, meron tayong simple and compound entries. Pero, dun muna tayo sa simple entries. Magbibigay tayo ng examples. So, after natin ma-identify and pa-measure ang isang event, Ire-record na natin siya sa journal. The process of recording a transaction is called journalizing. Meron tayo ditong transactions for wedding or as. Ito yung name ng entity during the month of May. Sabihin na natin May kasi ah, natapos na ang May. So, let's begin with the transactions. Start tayo sa May 1, syempre. So, Upon the advice and prodding of an esteemed colleague, Bendalin Dalicho, si Maria Concepcion Jennifer Perez Manalo, the owner, nag-decide siya to organize her wedding consultancy. So, she invested 250000 into this entity. Dun sa uh, wedding or us. Now, ang journal entry is, I have here now the journal. Don't forget to write the headings para sa bawat column. So, we have the date, the account titles and explanations, the PR or the posting reference na ginagamit kapag pinopost na ang entries. That is until the amounts are transferred to the related ledger accounts. Ang PR, ilalagay lang natin siya kapag napost na natin sa ledger ang bawat amount. Debit and the credit. So, for the date, we have the year 2020 and the month May. Tapos, one is the day. And then, for the debit, we have cash sa extreme left. Tapos, indented si credit, which is capital or parent manalo capital. 
and the description or the explanation of the transaction na magagamit pa rin natin further. Tapos, so the debit, this is the column for the debit, always, and the credit. Hindi sila pwedeng magsama, no? Now, cash is 250,000 and credit capital is 250,000. Dito na natin maa-apply yung nasa first video natin sa uh, acronym na DC Adler, no? Dito na natin siya magagamit. Cash is an asset, debit, no? Tapos, capital siya, si credit is equity. So, pasama siya sa LDR. Next is, May 1 pa rin. So, rent paid in advance. Exchange of assets to. May 1, she rented an office space and paid 2 months rent in advance. 8,000 pesos. Transaction natin, we have to leave one space bago natin siya i-enter. Now, Ang day pa rin natin is 1. Hindi na natin i write to 2020 and pay. Diretso na. Prepaid rent is debit. Tapos, cash is credit. 8,000 pesos. Ang explanation is paid rent in advance. Na pala, ang pagsulat natin dito sa journal, we have to start from the zeros. Sa right side natin. So, tatlong zeros, tapos 8. Dito ang... 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. Ito for the peso sign to. Tapos ito for decimals. Pero we are not putting decimal points like 0, .00. Ang decimal natin is ganyan lang. Parang underscore lang siya. Kasi hindi tayo dapat maglagay ng decimal points. Pwede mo siyang lagyan ng 0, 0 pero walang point. Pero ako, mas preferred ko ang parang uh, underscore. So, next transaction natin is May 2. Si Maria Concepcion, Jennifer Perez Manalo, nag-issue siya ng promissory note para sa 210,000 pesos na loan niya from Metrobank. Ibig sabihin, umutang siya sa Metrobank. Ang promissory note, syempre from the root word promise na note, kung kailan siya pwede magbayad or kaya magbayad. So, this availment will be used for the acquisition of a service vehicle. Yung inutang niya, ipapambili niya ng sasakyan. Tapos, the note carries a 20% interest per annum. Yung utang niya, meron interest na 20% per annum. Ibig sabihin, 20% every year. And the arrangement with the bank is that both the interest and the principal Ang principal is yung buong money or yung mismong amount na inutang niya which is 200,000, 210,000 pesos tapos are payable in full in one year. Ibig sabihin, isang taon lang ang dapat na ibibigay sa kanya ng Metro Bank bago niya mabayaran yun. Uh, for the third transaction, we have the debit the cash which is 210,000 pesos. Most payable is the credit one, which is also 210,000 pesos. Ang um, explanation natin is note issued for cash. Uh, every explanation, manggagaling lang rin siya sa ating transaction. Dun sa mismong uh, binigay na problem. And hindi mo siya dapat i-complicate kasi hindi naman siya hinihingi ng word by word na exactong dapat ganun yung ibigay mo. So, don't worry. Next uh, transaction, me to then, she hired an assistant in an account executive each with a 7,800 monthly salary or each is to receive 300 pesos per day for the 26th uh, day work month. No entry is necessary at this point. They started work immediately. Ibig sabihin, sinabi lang naman na nag-hire siya ng assistant, nag-hire siya ng account executive. Pero wa wala namang sinabing naglabas siya ng cash. Though, sinabi ko magkano yung monthly salary nila at saka yung receive nila every uh, day. Okay? Kasi di ba I've told you before dun ulit sa last video natin na hindi lahat ng transactions or ng events ay masasabi natin accountable o worthy na i-record natin sa journal or 
isama natin dun sa mga gagawin natin na financial statements. In that case, hindi naman required na talagang ilagay natin sa journal ang no entry, but it makes sense kasi para matrack mo pa rin kung anong nangyari sa mga transactions. Hindi ka naman mamamali dyan. Kasi wala naman talagang entry. Para lang uh, organized ka pa rin. So, next transaction. May 4, she acquired service vehicle for 420,000 pesos. The first, May 4, no? We have the debit service vehicle, 420,000 pesos. And cash is the credit, 420,000 pesos. Ang explanation natin dyan is um, acquisition of service vehicle. So, Debit natin office equipment which is 60,000 pesos. Sabi nagbayad siya ng cash 15,000 pesos. So, yun ang credit natin since decrease siya sa cash. Tapos, meron din siyang nadagdag na liability which is part ng credit natin na 45,000. So, when we add 15,000 na cash niya tapos yung utang niya pa na 45,000, 60,000 ang total which is the historical cost of our office equipment. Office equipment is debit kasi asset siya. Increase siya sa asset. Okay? Next transaction natin is May 8. She purchased supplies and account for 18,000 pesos from San Jose Merchandising. Right? The date, May 8. Debit supplies 18,000 pesos and accounts payable since Binili niya nga raw on account. So, liability siya, utang siya, credit, 18,000 pesos. And the uh, explanation is supplies purchased on account. So, kinabukasan, May 9, she paid San Jose Merchandising 10,000 of the amount owed. Ibig sabihin, di ba may utang siya, may accounts payable siya kahapon na 18,000 pesos for the supplies. Ngayon, nagbayad siya ng 10,000 pesos paid. May 9, we have to debit the account payable since she is settling her liability. Ibig sabihin, hindi porket liability ka, ilalagay mo siya sa credit kagaya nung nasa acronym natin. Kasi, ang ibig sabihin nun, increase ng liability. Now, kapag magbabayad na siya, you have to debit it kasi nga, it is a decrease in liability kasi isi-settle niya na yung obligation niya doon sa um uh, Merchandising now. Uh, accounts payable, debit, 10,000 pesos. Credit ng cash. Since mababawasan rin ang asset, ba? Increase ng asset ay debit. Ang decrease niya ay credit. So, cash is 10,000 pesos. Ang explanation is accounts payable. Partially settled. May 10. So, coordinated and finalized simple bridal arrangement for three couples and collected fees for 8,800 per couple. Ibig sabihin, nag-conduct na sila, nag-provide na sila ng service doon sa mga couple. So, ang sabi, 8,800 daw per couple. Eh, 3 ang couple. So, multiply natin sa 3. It is equal to 26,400. So, we have to debit the cash. Kasi ha, di ba nakakoleksya ng cash doon sa mga uh, customers. Now, cash is 26,400 debit kasi increase siya sa asset. Consulting revenue, revenue siya. So, kasama siya dun sa LER natin for the credit. So, sa DC Abler, consulting revenue is uh, 26,400. So, ang explanation is revenues earned and cash collected. Next transaction, we have the salaries paid. Oh, sabi, she paid salary 6,600 pesos. The entity pays uh, salaries every two Saturdays 
once na napuno na natin yung isang page ng journal. Ayan. Ayan, puno na siya. So, pwede na tayong mag-start ng panibagong page. But, kapag nag-start tayo ng panibagong page, don't forget to write the headings pa rin. You have the date, the account titles and explanations, the PR, the posting reference, debit, and the credit. Tapos, ganito ulit, year and the month pa rin ang ilalagay natin. Tapos, dito pa rin ang dates. Okay? Let's go. May 13, debit salary expense, which is 6,600. Credit cash, 6,600. Ang description natin is salary paid. Since expense siya, kaya debit siya. Diba? Sama siya dun sa ADE natin, sa DC Adler. May 19 naman, sabi, revenues earned on account. Ibig sabihin, yung kita, hindi niya nasingil cash. Coordinated and finalized elaborate bridal arrangements for three couples. For uh, fees that are billed, for 12,000 per couple. So, ilan yan? 36,000. For May 19, accounts receivable ang debit natin, which is 36,000. Increase siya sa asset dahil um, to be received siya na cash. Consulting revenues ay revenue siya, di ba? Yung kita is 36,000 since 12,000 per couple. Ang um, explanation is revenues earned on account. Ibig sabihin, Nag-provide sila ng service pero hindi nila na-collect yung pera sa cash. So, account si Sibabal ang entry natin. Next is May 25. Perez Manalo, yung owner, she withdrew 14,000 pesos for personal expenses. Pero ang uh, money, we withdrew niya doon sa uh, business. So, may effect siya? Meron or wala? Meron. Nag-withdrew si owner. So, uh, Perez Manalo, withdrawals ang debit, uh, 14,000 pesos, and credit cash, since decrease siya sa asset, so 14,000 pesos, withdrawal of cash by the owner. Nung May 30 naman daw, she received the ICC buy and tel telephone bill, which is 1,400, since ginagamit nila yun sa business. Sabi, this is an expense incurred. Pag sinabing incurred, nagamit mo na yung uh, expense na yun. For example, tubig. Ganyan, di ba ang tubig na ginagamit natin sa bahay, binabayaran na natin after a month. Yun ang uh, example ng expense na incurred, bought, unpaid, or hindi pa binabayaran. Last natin is utilities expense, o yung nagamit nating utilities for the telephone is 1,400 Tapos, utilities payable, 1,400 pesos. Expenses incurred but unpaid. But if and when na-collect niya yung accounts receivable niya from the transaction dito sa uh, May 19, dun sa hindi nagbayad ng cash, magiging uh, credit na natin si accounts receivable, debit si cash. Increase ng asset, 24,000 pesos. Accounts receivable, 24,000 pesos. Dahil sabi, partially collected lang, 24,000 lang ang binayaran ni uh, customer. Day of the month, we have, uh, sabi niya, nag-settle siya ng electricity bill of 3,000 for the month. Kasi dito sa isa natin, ito, sa 30, nakareceive lang siya ng bill, yung resibo. Big sabihin, may utang pa siya. And hindi niya pa binabayaran yun. Dito, nagbayad siya. Sabi, settled kasi. So, Nibayad siya ng utilities expense kasi dapat i-debit 3,000 pesos and cash decrease ng asset which is 3,000 pesos as well. Ang explanation is expenses incurred and paid. So, um, you have to try this sa sarili mo. Practice your own. Tapos, I'll be giving examples next time. Please tayo parang ganun. And then, check your own answers. Be honest and... Help yourself grow and improve every day. Good luck!